Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Mythic Mobs tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different because it's not really so much a tutorial per se as it is just helpful tips and tricks to help you create mobs more efficiently. Um, this is going to be a tutorial in a few parts, so whatever part applies to you, please go ahead and feel free to skip to. I will make sure they are relatively different, so that way if you already know how to do one thing, you don't have to stick around and watch the entire tutorial just to figure out how to do something else. Don't keep my word too close on that, but I will try my best to make sure that is the case. So with that being said, let me go ahead and start talking about my videos here. So I realized I got a request the other day asking me, well, Moosh, you make all these awesome tutorials. And these mechanics are super cool, but, uh, well, how do you actually make a mob? And it kind of hit me, none of my videos really are for absolute beginners. Well, what I'm going to suggest first, um, look at the Mythic Mobs Manual website. There is a tab over on the left side that has mobs under it and mob overview. That'll get you started off on a good track as long as you read through it, because they made a pretty decent tutorial on how to make a very, very basic mob from scratch. I will eventually work on my own... Excuse me. I will eventually work on my very own tutorial for this, um, and how to, you know, set them up from scratch. That might even be part of this tutorial itself. Who knows? But, um... Like I said, highly recommend looking at the manual, the mobs overview, because that will have a lot more information than I can probably give right now. Um, because most of Mythic Mobs, if I'm going to be entirely honest with you, it's just, well, it's almost entirely trial and error. So, you know, you just, you kind of find something you like in the manual, sounds cool, looks cool, and you just, well, you just give it a shot. You try it out, you see how you like it. So. Um, again, look at the t uh, look at the manual, try stuff out, um, look at the mob overview, it's got a little mob section there on how to get started. If it's still confusing, I promise I will have a tutorial out in the future, but just not right now. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start off this tutorial with... Um, general mob stuff to begin with. I highly recommend switching into my next video if you want to learn what I'm going to do with the skills. Now this, uh, some of this stuff I will not cover in this video, however I will cover all of this in the next one. So starting off, you're gonna go ahead and make a mob file. Right here is your internal mob name. This is what Mythic Mobs is going to use to refer to it as. Every single time you spawn it in, kill it, um, literally any skill that has to deal with it, it's always going to use this internal name, because this is the main string, and if you need extra proof, everything disappears when I collapse it, and it all disappears under this. So, don't worry about what your display says. This is literally just a name tag that appears over your mob. So like whenever you put a name tag on like an animal and you see that little name above it, that's all that this is. So this isn't really that important, um, except for obviously when you want your mob to show its name above its head, you know, like during a fight or something, then it's important. But for the time being, we're not gonna worry about that. Now we got mob type here. For the sake of testing stuff and beginning, I always recommend doing husk. Why husk? Well, because it is the only type of undead mob that does not burn in direct daylight. This can be combated by adding equipment to a mob, but, well, we're not going to worry about that right now. For the sake of making this easy on everybody, we are going to stay with husk. Next is the health value. By default, it will always have the default health of whatever mob you type here. However, I obviously have it set to zero, and that won't work because, well, it won't be able to spawn in correctly because how can you spawn a mob that doesn't even have health to begin with? So what we're going to do, what I think is the best way to go about this, set its health from anywhere from 50 to maybe, maybe even 100. Nope, that's a thousand, my apologies. The reason this is a big difference is because, say you're fighting a mob, and, you know, he's a pretty beefy boy, 
You don't want to be going to town on him in the testing phase and wondering, well, why is this taking so long, you know? I just want to kill him and then spawn in a new one. Well, my friends, that's because if you set his health to a thousand, that's going to take a pretty long time to kill. At least, you know, without proper equipment. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it at a hundred for the sake of testing. Next is damage. This is going to be a pretty big deal here because for the sake of testing, it, um, well, it, it can make a pretty significant difference. Why? Well, let me go ahead and show you here. Spawn tutorial mod. So as you can see, I set it to zero, which means he's just going to do the base damage that a husk would normally do. Uh, the one downside to using husk is you can see I get hunger, but if you're testing mobs, I assume you have access to admin commands that you can just heal him. So, let me go ahead and kill him off here. Now, why zero? Why not something that, you know, you're gonna start off fighting that way? You know, something with its base damage already set. Well, let's just say it does not end go over well if you are in the testing phase. I just set his damage to 10, and as you can see, there go seven and a half of my hearts, and boom, insta death to hit. Very important. So, let me go ahead and kill him here before he kills me, if I can. Uh, nope, he got me first. I am not that fast of a type of this morning. And this is something that you will have happen. One moment. <laughs> okay. So we're back in business, I am finally alive again. So that is why it's very important to have his damage set to zero for the sake of the testing phase. Of course, this can always be bumped up later, or if you want to make a specific item for your mob that does a specific amount of damage when hit, you can always use that route as well. However, most of the mobs that I create don't generally have weapons, so it's not something that I personally worry about. If they did have weapons, I would recommend setting their damage to zero. Next, movement speed. What is so important about their movement speed? Well, obviously, how fast they move and how fast they're going to run around in combat or chase players is what's important. So, well, what I'm going to explain here is the best way to do it for the sake of testing because you probably can guess what movement speed is. First off, I'm going to tell you the default movement speed, no matter what mob you're using, is 0.2. With that being said, setting it to 0.3 will double its speed, to 0.1 will half its speed. But for right now, we're going to do something different and set it to 0.01. Now why can't I just use 0.0? .0? Well that's because technically this isn't a value. Since no value is being put in here at 0.0, .0 it's going to continue to walk at its move normal movement speed as if this string wasn't even existent to begin with. So with that, we're going to set it to 0.01. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So as you can see, he's not even moving. It's because Minecraft's movement speed is already fairly low, so when you have it at one one hundredth of a decimal, well, that's so low for Minecraft that it's just not even going to bother with it, and your mom's just going to stand there entirely. This is very important because you sometimes you're going to have a skill that has some sort of targeting to it, like it targets players specifically, and you're going to want to have it targeting players, and sometimes you just don't want it to move. That's why it's important... Um, to not have no AI set to true and have movement speeds up to 0.01. .01. I will show you this uh, in the next tutorial video that I make that follows this one because this is going to directly correlate to these skills here. They do go hand in hand and I will be covering movement speed again in the next video just in case, just so I can show you the relativity of it. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and kill our friend here. If I can type right. Okay. So now we have a few other options here. And there are many more than just these, but I think these are the essential ones. Prevent random equipment. This is generally important if me messing with a boss mob, 
because as you just saw my mob before I killed him, he had full chainmail armor because that's just how he happened to spawn in as an undead. This can happen with any undead mob, so uh, in my personal opinion, unless of course you want it to be that way, you can if you want to, but for the sake of bosses, it's generally best to switch false to true, to where they do not spawn in with random equipment. Next, prevent other drops. Again, you don't have to do this, but for the sake of bosses and say you have your own drop tables, it's very important to have this set to true because you don't want, say, a zombie dropping rotten flesh every single time you kill it. Last, well not last, but second to last, prevent item pickup. Again, you can have it this way if you want to. I personally don't think a boss should be able to pick up a, uh, a player's items, and this does go for armor, weapons, tools, literally anything. It will pick up whatever it can and use it to fight you. I think it's best to always set this to true when making bosses, because that can cause your boss balancing to be very, very overpowered if, say, it has high health and no armor and it decides to pick up a player's full set of diamond armor, well, that can be pretty devastating. So, since that is the case, we're just going to go ahead and turn it off by setting it to true. Lastly, this one's just kind of a, well, this one's just kind of a convenience thing here. Silent? It literally means just that. Your mob is going to hush its face. So, I personally like setting this to true, it's very important, or it can be anyway, if, per se, you wanted to use custom sound effects. Uh, there is a sound skill for that, I will not be going over that in this tutorial, but I like setting it to true too, just so that way, whenever I spawn him in, and maybe I'm working on something in the, uh, um, the mob file, I don't hear him breathing in my face 24-7. As you can hear, or not, there's no sound coming from him now. This is a pretty, uh, like I said, it's, it's more of a leisure type um, thing than it is important. It can be important, but, you know, nothing is more annoying than being in your config and just hearing this all the time. Yeah, pretty annoying. So this is all I really have for you guys as far as mob setup goes. I personally think generally you know what you're doing, so you don't have to mess with this too much, but those are just some base settings for the sake of testing new mobs and say testing new skills. I hope this video has helped you guys. Make sure to stick around to my next tutorial. If this inspired you or helped you in any way, please make sure to give a like and a thumbs up. And stay tuned for more Mythic Madness and more Mythic tutorials. I will continue to make them for a while and I will try to cover more stuff because I realized all my stuff was mechanic based rather than just, you know, essential stuff like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.